what's going on? If I seem a little bit lower, a little bit more somber, it's because I am. I've been reflecting two things that happened in the last couple of days that have me reflecting uh, more calmly than my normal uh, espresso self is um, a, a relatively close acquaintance, a uh, beautiful young lady took her own life. Uh, and uh, an acquaintance from my hometown's 18 year old son got murdered and uh, two or three days ago. And so I'm reflecting. I went through a very tough challenge in my life as most of us have with a vicious breakup of two families. There was uh, some infidelity and cheating going on and it affected the young kids, uh, two of mine and four of theirs. It was really, really ugly and I got really low and I was thinking of ways to check out and that was about seven years ago. So I want to tell you a little bit about my experience of how fragile life is. Just a reminder, we know that, most people know that, but we need to get reminded every once in a while. And when I thought how life works is counterintuitive almost every time in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. And when we think something is really, really bad, it can turn out to be the best thing that ever happened to us. Not at that time, but as long as we don't quit and we keep driving forward because you see it's the trials and tribulations that are strong enough to force us to change. Because if we don't change, we're gonna, we have to make our own bed. We're making our own bed with our words, our thoughts, and our actions. And we have to be responsible and say, it's because of me. If it is to be, it is up to me. Can't have any of this victim mindset. If th those people probably don't even watch my stuff anyway, but we all tend to have a little bit of a victim mindset at times, possibly. So the experience that I had, one of the worst things that ever happened to me initially when I was going through it was I was a four, I'm 52 now. So a 44 year young man had to go live at home with his mommy because I couldn't, I lost everything. I lost my business, I lost my sanity, I couldn't sleep at night. I tried meds so I could try to get up out of bed and I'm an anti-med guy as you well know. But push comes to shove, you gotta do something to try to get up the next day and go forward to hold on to your, your business. And it didn't work and I crashed. And luckily I had four or five people around me one came and took the Glock 45 out of my apartment. I didn't hold it up to my temple, but I was thinking about how could I do it? What would, I got out my life insurance policy. I was looking at the fine print for my daughters, if you know what I mean. And I actually literally did that. So my buddy Randy came and got the Glock out of my house, almost took me into the psych ward and put me in because he didn't know what else to do. Uh, I had a buddy that once I got through that day, I was on my hands and knees sobbing for about eight hours with Randy trying to figure out what he was gonna do with me. I made it through that day, barely by the skin of my teeth. And then I had a, a friend who let me stay at his house rent free, Dave Stinnett Flex, I love you, man. Uh, I never paid him a dime and you know, that started to heal my process. I didn't get out of bed for two, three days at a time sometimes, but at least I didn't, you know, at least I was in uh, like a little safe womb environment, relatively safe for the time being. Then when he said, you know, Darren, you gotta get out of here, I gotta sell this place, I got responsibility as well. And it hurt at first, but I was like, you know, he, he's right. So I went at home to live with my mommy and my daddy at 45 years young. And I'm not proud to admit it, but I'm not ashamed either. And I thought it was the worst thing in life. I couldn't financially support myself or my daughters. That's not a good feeling for a man. I lost my business, lost my half a million dollar home. The bank owned it. I lost my cars. I lost my 401k. I lost my business, got stolen from me. Um, I had nothing. So. You know, I lost my faith in myself and faith in God. So, but the worst thing in life turned out to be the best thing because you know what? When you focus on someone else's problems, issues, you can't think about your own poor, woe me uh, thing going on. So my mom and my dad needed me because it was the last year of my dad's life. And I wanted my dad to die peacefully at home instead of the hospital. My mom didn't think she could do it. And I said, mom, let's go. Come on, we can keep, we can keep dad at home. Because when my dad went in the hospital at the end of his life, he had a mental breakdown because no one wants to die in a hospital. They know what's going on. Drugs, they're not gonna see their loved ones. They wanna sleep in their own bed. So one day I said, mom, let's keep dad at home. I'll help you. We'll juggle the meds. Hospice will help us at the end. We'll make it. We can do it. And we did it. And through that year process, and we had to 
two or three nights, my mom comes screaming into my, my room that I was sleeping in her house and said, he's, he's dying. So I ran in the room and he was white. His uh, blood sugars were falling and he was looking at me saying, I, I'm going to hell because that's a whole nother story. But he was uh, very afraid. And I brought him back two times for sure, maybe three. When your best friend almost dies in your hands thinking he's going to hell and have eternal damnation because he was a bad person, everybody's bad, I told him. We had the conversations uh, and I was able to let him go to the next level at maybe, you know, the thief on the cross had another chance to live for eternally and have a peace in his heart when he died and my dad did too in the end. So that experience of me nurturing my mom and dad and being by my father until his last breath with the help of hospice, which is a day I'll never forget, was an unbelievably empowering experience for me. And I know my dad's in a great place. I feel great about it, man. I love, I love my dad, Ken, and I love what I did for him. And, and so th like immediately after my dad passed, after the funeral, my mom said, I'm, I'm, I nurtured my mom back to strength as well. And she nurtured me back to strength. So when you give, you get. And so I was able to go out and get a job. Uh, it wasn't my niche, personal training, but I was one of my clients loved me and said, you're an amazing speaker. Come and be an OSHA certified health and safety manager. So I had to live away from my two daughters who were living in Mokina uh, in Nashville. And for a year making peanuts, I was uh, getting up and the construction guys were ridiculing me. I was in a really bad spot, but I put Darren Steen's Healthy Lifestyle Positive Coach into a, a, a new uh, position, OSHA, construction. I, I don't use tools. I know nothing about construction but I created a new position that had never been created before. Now they're consulting and paying me high fees, four to $10,000 to speak because of this new thing I created on the construction site. So that's another win situation. But these two things, me living a great life now and being a great father for my daughters and being financially responsible again uh, and being a better personal trainer all evolved from what I thought at the time was the worst thing in life. I almost ended my own life and I almost just checked out, but I didn't. That's the moral of this story. That whatever, when you get crashed down on your knees and you're sobbing and you hit rock bottom, remember that can be a firm foundation to build and rebuild, but we need to learn our lessons. We need to learn the lessons from the trials and tribulations of the journey. And I did learn some lessons, not all of them, I'm still learning. But when you think you've hit rock bottom and you think that it's really bad in the, in the long run, if you don't give up, if you take a personal responsibility mindset, if you take that athletic mindset, I call it, Rocky said it best, you know, it's not how hard you hit, it's how hard you can get hit and get back up and take one step forward, one little step forward. And I can so freaking relate to that. And I hope you uh, receive something valuable out of this story, which is a very true story. You do have the power to change. Comment below if you're going through trials and tribulations or if you had some success, you, pro you could be at a better place than me uh, through trials and tribulations or you might not be quite there yet. Um, we're better together, let's go next level together. I love you, but more importantly, I want you to grow towards liking yourself first and loving yourself because once you love yourself, everything changes if you get a little bit of a plan of attack and don't give up. You do have the power to change to make the rest of your life the best of your life.